and welcome to another brand new episode of This Week in Disney History. I am your host, Milo Beasley. And we have a good one for you this week. It is Christmas week. Uh, I got you a gift. It's me. It, uh, unfortunately, I have no receipt, so you can only exchange me for store credit. Let's just move along and talk about what happened <laughs> this week in Disney history. Uh, we're going to start things off December 20th, 1958. The very first candlelight processional at Disneyland. This is the first time they went down Main Street. Um, now, it's a little bit different and, and it's uh, the final form where we have like, you know, the guest narrators um, reading verses from the Bible and, uh, and then the chorus singing uh, songs and hymns. Um, there was no celebrity narrator, but there was a procession of candlelight holders, hence candlelight processional. I hope things get better from here on out. I'm moving on <laughs> December 20th, 1968. Fans of Winnie the Pooh, this one is for you. Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day is released in theaters. It's hard to believe that it's 1968. Man, Winnie the Pooh's an old one, but he looks great. Uh, December 20th, 1971. Unfortunately, last week we talked about some passings. Uh, we have another big one this week is December 20th, 1971. Just a couple months after making sure Walt Disney World opened up, Walt's brother Roy O. Disney passes away. Um, you can still pay your respects to Roy as there is a, a statue, uh, a, a bench that's out, a bench statue, a statue bench, a stench. Um, nope, that's not right. Uh, there's a statue bench in the uh, near the flagpole uh, in in town square um, at Walt Disney World that you can sit and get your picture taken with Roy like this. Um, and then what are we, uh, 2013, there's a lot of things on this day, 2013, December 30th, 20th, 2013, seven years ago, if you were a fan of Mary Poppins, and I am sure you have seen Saving Mr. Banks. Saving Mr. Banks is not a retelling of Mary Poppins, but it is the telling of how Mary Poppins came to be. So if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. There's a lot of faces you can be like, Whoa, that guy is in this? Yes. Yep. Uh, 2019. So just last year, Star Wars Rise of the Skywalker released in theaters. Or, I mean, I think that's, there is a lot of, it's whether or not it was the best way to wrap up the trilogy of the trilogy. So like that was the trilogy, the third set of trilogies but it was uh, the third movie of that trilogy. So it was a tr trilogy. I'm going to stop mixing words now because that's the second time it's come off really badly. So moving on to December 21st. A huge day in Disney history. December 21st, 1937. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs uh, is the, has the world premiere at Carthay Circle in Los Angeles. And if you're wondering, yes, this is really, really hot. Um, but that's beside the point. So a huge day. We'll actually talk about this day and the success of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs uh, on this day later on in the episode. So hashtag spoilers. But again, a huge, huge day in Disney history as it set forth a domino effect of successes. So uh, if it wasn't for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, who knows where we would be today. I probably wouldn't be talking about Disney history. Uh, speaking of world premieres, December 21st, 1944. Three Caballeros debuts has its world premiere in Mexico City. Now, it wouldn't be released in the United States until the following year, but Donald, Jose, and Panchito are uh, joined together as the three caballeros uh, on this date in 1944. Arriba. Did I do that right? 
Uh, and then on this date, 2018, so just two years ago, the Tropical Hideaway opens up at Disneyland. I absolutely love the Tropical Hideaway because you don't have to go and wait in that stupid long line uh, over by the Tiki Room to be able to get a Dole Whip. And they have like other flavors of like whips. So it's not just like the pineapple Dole Whip. There's other flavors. There's other fruity stuff. There's other snacks. So it's not like you can only get the Dole Whip even though I usually only get the dull whip. Uh, moving on, December 22nd, 1995, we will be celebrating the 25th anniversary of Chef Mickey's at the Contemporary Resort. That is right, 25 years of flinging the napkins and hanging out with Mickey and all his friends uh, during the, the character dining at Chef Mickey's. Um, I actually really enjoy Chef Mickey's. They got the, they have the breakfast, lunch, and the dinners, but I don't know if they, yep. Yeah. Uh, and then on this date, 2007, right? Yes, 2007, the Tower of Terror at Disneyland Paris Resorts, Walt Disney Studios opens up to guests. So uh, if you, uh, this is actually like, I believe it's, uh, it's one of the it's obviously one of the newer ones but i don't think it has uh it it's still based on um some of the original mechanics so it doesn't have uh so it's not exactly like walt disney worlds and obviously not like disneyland's or tokyo's but um so it's a all different experience um and i've written it about four times in a row before i finally tapped out i know a lot of people have written it even longer but I think four was my limit. I'm old now, so like one is my limit. Uh, December 23rd, 1954, a huge movie for Disney. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea uh, it has its uh, release in theaters. I've never, I've never seen it. I mean, I, th I think I've seen it, but like not recently, not since like I've had memories. On this date, December 23rd, 1998. Uh, La Nuba as Circus Soleil at Downtown Disney, which is now Disney Springs, but the Circus Soleil doesn't have shows there. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. La Nuba, Cirque, Soleil, Downtown Disney, Springs, Walt Disney World. I never saw it. Not really into like my sister is huge into Cirque, but it just was never my thing. So sorry. Uh, and then just five years ago, when I say just, I mean we've had five years, uh, the 2015 of the Disney and Pixar Film Fest at the Epcot. It replaced Captain EO, but we've had five years of the Disney and Pixar Film Festival. We can't figure out anything better to put in that spot. Unless we do Captain EO for like the sixth time. And then moving on, December 24th, it is Christmas Eve. Uh, there's actually, uh, I, I'm assuming you are familiar with the song, The Most Wonderful Time of the Year. There is a line in the song about telling scary ghost stories on Christmas Eve. And that is exactly what Walt Disney did in 1937 as it was the release of Lonesome Ghost. That's right. The Mickey, Donald, and Goofy cartoon Lonesome Ghost is released on Christmas Eve, 1937. I know you're all thinking this was a Halloween cartoon. It is not. It is a Christmas. It is a Christmas Eve. It is a Christmas cartoon. So now there is something else for you to watch. Hopefully you learned something that Lonesome Ghost is now a Christmas movie and not a Halloween movie. Watch it on the Disney Plus on Christmas Eve because that's what I'm new tra new tradition. We all watch Lonesome Ghost on Christmas Eve. Uh, Christmas Eve, December twenty fourth, nineteen seventy. So fifty years we're celebrating. 50 years, the 50th anniversary of the release of the Aristocats. Woo! Huge Aristocats fan. Met them in Paris, doing a race. Uh, met them in Tokyo, not doing a race. 
But anytime I get a chance to meet the Aristocats, I absolutely love it. Uh, Marie Ber uh, Berlu uh, Berlioz in Toulouse. I was see how he's combining words again. I, it's... Moving on. <laughs> December 24th, 1971. So a couple months after the opening of the Magic Kingdom, Flight to the Moon uh, premieres for guests. Uh, this would last less than four years as it would close in 1975 to replace by Mission to Mars and then Alien Encounter and then Stitch's uh, Great Escape. So if you're wondering like, well, where, what and where was Flight to the Moon? It's where Stitch's uh, meet and greet used to be last year before it was Stitches Great Escape and then Alien Encounter and then uh, Mission to Mars. You, you, get, you get the idea. It was there. So here we are, Christmas Day. Christmas Day, 1957. Old Yeller makes, wait, you did, wait, you made people feel like that on Christmas Day? You made people cry on Christmas Day when they watched the Old Yeller. Think about that, all you people who move it on. That's sad. 1963 uh, on Christmas Day, Walt Disney uh, Pictures releases its 18th animated feature, The Sword and the Stone. I've uh, actually got a chance to meet with one of the um, animators, uh, Floyd Norman. If you haven't got a chance to uh, watch his documentary on his DVD, goes to his website and buy it now. But yes, Sword in the Stone with Merlin and stuff. Merlin is a character who I have not yet got to meet at the Disney, but maybe I will. What are we talking about? Oh yeah, Christmas Day, Christmas Day 1983 was the very first time the Walt Disney World Very Merry Christmas Parade was broadcast live on the television. Now it's like taped and stuff. Now I don't even know if they have one this year, but now it's like taped in like November. So it's not even broadcast live on Christmas Day anymore. So when you're watching the Christmas Day Parade, it's all lies. It's all lies. Hashtag fake news. Shame to myself for saying that. Um, and then uh, on this day, Christmas Day, 1990, the Black Hole is released in theaters for the I, you guys are like no no that's like that movie is from like the 70s yes that movie originally came out in 1979 but it's released in theaters for the fourth and final time the black hole was released in theaters four times they thought people wanted to watch it four times it was in the theaters for 749 days the black hole of all the movies to put in a theater for a span of two years, they thought it should be The Black Hole. Moving on, the last day of this week, December 26th, Boxing Day. It's not, it's not that sort of boxing, apparently. Sorry, apologies. But uh, 1939... Um, apparently it's about like packing stuff up and putting stuff in boxes, which is exactly what Walt Disney did. That's called a segue. <laughs> That's probably one of my best ever. Uh, following the success of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs on this day, December 26, 1939, Walt Disney and company started moving Walt Disney Studios to their new Burbank location. So their famous Burbank Studios. This is the day that Walt Disney started moving into that studio. They moved from uh, their Hyperion Avenue. Uh, yes, you're going to watch the Hyperion Theater at Disneyland. This is where it came from because their studio was on Hyperion Avenue. Uh, and they moved to the new fancy Burbank Studio. One day, it is a bucket list item to be able to visit the studios in Burbank. So, and then finally, December 26, 1941. Yep, we're staying way back there. Uh, 1941. There's a goofy cartoon titled The Art of Self Defense. And I think a lot of you know this cartoon. 
But did you know it is the first Goofy cartoon in which there were featured multiple Goofies? So uh, there's like what um, Double Dribble in which Goofy plays, which a team of Goofies plays another team of Goofies in basketball. There's How to Play Football that has a team of Goofies playing another team of Goofies in, yeah, in football. And then but Art of Self-Defense was the first time that multiple Goofies were on screen, which means there is a whole race of Goofies out there that we don't even know about, right? It's like the enti- they're like an entire race of, uh, of Wookiees, right? We know Chewbacca, and we know that there's these other ones. So we know Goofy, and we know that there's these other ones. When, I mean, can we have a third Goofy movie that goes into the lives of these other Goofies? And is the race called Goofy? These are things we're going to talk about on our podcast uh, starting the first week of January. Yes, we are moving this show. So next week will be the last week that we do the Facebook, YouTube videos. And we'll be moving to a podcast form. So that way we can deep dive into the interesting... Uh, world of uh, some of these uh, topics uh, like a race of goofies. So if you want to listen to, uh, you know, 30 minutes or so of stuff like that, please follow me over there to the podcast. We'll have the the website up. Um, start, uh, I'll have the link next week, or maybe I just put it up right now once I do it later. Uh, but yes, yeah, so um, I believe it's going to be the Milo Beasley show.com slash podcast, but I don't think it's up yet. So don't go there yet. Uh, but thank you for, for watching. Of course, uh, please tell your friends, subscribe, follow, like, share. Um, and then we'll be doing this next week. And we'll do a podcast. But I still bring, plan on bringing you a ton of other interviews and stuff like that on the Milo Beasley Show. So thank you for hanging out with me. And I'll see you next week for this week in Disney history. Whew. It's hot.